As we learn and grow, we all face opportunities for life-changing decisions that have the ability to alter the course of our lives forever. For some people, it might be something as simple as picking up a baseball when they're five, leading to a full-blown career. For others, it's making the brave decision to chase new opportunities in another state or even country while leaving behind family and friends. Even making the decision to film skits for the internet can change the trajectory of your future in a big way. And a lot of the time, the biggest changes that we embrace can lead us into the next chapters of our lives. But other times, a life-changing decision can lead you to the last chapter of your life too, and you may never see it coming. My name is Brianne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the 2004 murders of Jackie and Tom Hawks, a married couple who made the decision to sell their 65-foot yacht, which was aptly named The Well-Deserved, and ended up dying for it in a head-scratching crime that would baffle investigators. Generally, when I look for cases, I have a pretty wild approach to it. But for this case, I did something different. I remembered hearing about it from years ago, and I wanted to remind myself what happened. Now, my interest in true crime has, at this point, lasted for well over a decade. And when I was in school, I would just spend hours watching Investigation Discovery. One show that I was always interested in was Wicked Attraction, a show that focuses on murderous couples. The episode that I watched on this case actually aired back in 2010, and still, to this day, this case sticks with me. And if you're not familiar with it, I'm pretty sure that it's going to stick with you too. Tom and Jackie Hawks were two people who were living a life that some of us, including me, dream about. This happy couple, enjoying their 40s and 50s respectively, had spent years living aboard a yacht on the California coast. These two spent their days and nights living aboard this wonderful boat and traveling all over, and from everything that I've read, they seem to live an incredibly happy and fulfilling life. But sometimes, even the most beautiful and interesting lives bring a need for change, and Tom and Jackie found theirs. After years spent traveling and enjoying their yacht, they decided to move to Arizona to be closer to their grandchild. It was a big choice to make, but it was one that felt right for them, so they immediately set into motion to sell their boat so that they could take this next big step together. And... Their intent to sell their yacht was what actually led them straight to their killers. When you think of sales, you probably think of one of many stereotypes. You might think about the sleazy car salesman that's out to sell you a lemon. Maybe you think about the smooth-talking and aggressive tactics of corporate salespeople. Maybe you even tried sales once and remember how much you hated it. But... The world of sales isn't all fast talking and fast cash. Some of the more everyday sales that we see actually come with the highest risks. Real estate agents routinely put themselves at risk when they show homes, and plenty of them have been the victims of crimes. Something as simple as buying baby clothes from a local through an internet marketplace can get you killed, or worse in some cases, as we know. And in this case, Tom and Jackie walked into that same risk with the intent to make this sale. They wanted to sell a valuable asset to move forward in their lives, and to do so, they committed to allowing strangers on their boat. On the surface, it makes sense, right? No one wants to pay just under a million dollars for a yacht without seeing it, but... Tom and Jackie did not see that the people who showed interest in their yacht actually had darker plans. Jackie and Tom, being two people who wanted to share their wonderful yacht and current home, 
We're all too happy to take couple Skylar and Jennifer DeLeon out on the water to show them just how great their boat truly was. The group headed out to sea, and they brought a couple of extra passengers. These were people who Tom and Jackie believed were there to protect the business interests of Skylar and Jennifer. Everyone went out to sea, but then something strange happened. Time began to pass, and no one heard from Jackie or Tom. It was as if they simply vanished, and that made their families really worried. Remember, they were planning to move to be with family, so they were in constant communication. Eventually, the police were called in, and they began to pursue the case. To start, they met with Skylar and Jennifer, the proud new owners of the well-deserved, but as you might expect... They didn't deserve that boat at all. When asked, they were able to provide all of the documents that confirmed the purchase, and they told police that Tom and Jackie had left in their car. The yacht, they claimed, was paid for in cash. Skyler, a former child actor, claimed that he had a sizable amount of remaining assets, but that sounded a little suspicious. Police just weren't buying this story, so they continued to push back on it, and to their surprise, Skylar actually caved. But he didn't admit to playing a role in Jackie and Tom's disappearance. He admitted to money laundering and told police that he actually accumulated a ton of wealth from illegally selling drugs. As you can imagine, the police were quite taken aback by this admission. This man just freely admitted to a crime, and a felony at that. But they were still focused on finding Tom and Jackie. Someone knew where they were. Then, police received some alarming news. Someone was tampering with Tom and Jackie's bank accounts. When they looked into this, they learned that Skylar and Jennifer were responsible for the sudden bank activity. But when they questioned it, police were informed that this strange couple had documents that gave them power of attorney. Why would Tom and Jackie give control of their lives to complete strangers? Something was very clearly wrong here. As you might expect, police wanted to look into this more. What would possess Jackie and Tom to just hand over such important legal rights, and where were they? Investigators decided to check out the paperwork for the transaction, and while it was legitimate paperwork, there were some pretty big red flags. The biggest red flag was that Jackie had apparently signed her name wrong calling herself Jackie Hawk instead of Hawks. Was this just a simple signing error? Or something more sinister? Was this a plea for help? I thought this was pretty interesting because they do do something kind of comparable in a series of unfortunate events. Um, it, It does seem like a pretty good way to throw up a red flag, but it also seems like something that somebody would do under duress. I think we can all agree. And we all know the answer here, right? With documentation like this, you can't just sign it in private and call it good. The paperwork also had a witness and a notary signature on it. Police asked these other people about the paperwork, and they claimed that it was all good and legal. But police knew that something was rotten with this entire story, and... Jackie and Tom were still missing. The police needed concrete evidence that could confirm that Skylar and possibly Jennifer were involved with this disappearance. They needed a way to show a more substantial connection between everyone, so what they really needed was the legal right to search Jennifer and Skylar DeLeon's property. Fortunately, after Skylar's confession... They had one. Police were able to use his admissions about drug money and money laundering 
to search the De Leon residence where they found Tom and Jackie's personal papers, tech devices, and more. But there was still another problem. There weren't any bodies. If there is anything that we can learn from TV representations of murders and investigations, it's the fact that murder charges without the actual bodies are very tricky. Hoping to get more evidence, police turned to Alonzo McChain, the witness from the sales receipt, and Kathleen Harris, the notary. After some questioning, Kathleen Harris admitted to accepting extra money to backdate the paperwork and to the fact that she never actually saw Tom or Jackie. As you can imagine, this isn't exactly legal. When they found Alonzo Machain, he was actually hiding from a different arrest in Mexico. Machain admitted that he was there on the day they all went out on the boat and that he wasn't alone. A local gang member named John F. Kennedy, and yes, you did hear that right, was also on board. And then Machain hit police with the cold, hard truth. He told police that they lured the Hawkses out to sea with the comfort of Jennifer DeLeon, who was, in fact, pregnant. Then, when they got out to sea, the group overtook Tom and Jackie Hawks. They were attacked, physically forced to sign the paperwork, essentially signing over all of their money and property, and then they were tossed out to sea. But... There was no hope that Jackie and Tom were still afloat somewhere, clinging to each other out on the water. According to McChain, Tom and Jackie were tied to an anchor when they were thrown overboard. They were dead. Accepting a deal, McChain received only 20 years in prison for his role in this crime. But there were still others to sentence. Both Skylar DeLeon and John F. Kennedy were sentenced to death. Jennifer was given life in prison. Tom and Jackie were lost, leaving behind grieving relatives who I'm sure are still cursing the names of these horrible criminals. I don't know how so many people can be comfortable with such cruelty and violence in the name of personal gain. I'm really not sure how they thought that they would get away with this, but in the end, they were brought to justice. Something interesting about this case is how shocked everyone is by Jennifer DeLeon's actions. There is this constant sentiment that women that are pregnant or are mothers can't be bad people. And I'm just going to call it what it is, and that's sexist. Pregnancy nor motherhood exempt someone from monstrous behavior. Mothers abuse and kill their children on a regular basis. They emotionally abuse their families. They kill their spouses. They lie, cheat, and steal from family, friends, and strangers. Tom and Jackie saw a pregnant mother instead of the three goons that were with her. And the truth is that there were four horrible people on that boat ready to take advantage of two innocent people who just wanted to be closer to their own family. I think that this story is just devastating. And I also think that it's a stark reminder that even the most innocent looking strangers can be capable of horrific crimes. I hope that the relatives of Tom and Jackie remember them fondly and can use that love to heal. If you want to talk about the psychological impacts of fame on childhood stars, narcissistic mothers, or yacht living, feel free to connect with me on Twitter or Instagram using the tag at datpod. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>